first week, she counted on one hand the number of brown-skinned people in her cottage, and none as dark as her. In the baronial dining hall, she could barely look up from her plates of revolting Stone Age food, let alone converse with anyone. She overheard loud reminiscences about the dorms and drugs of boarding school, Christmas holidays in Goa, the Bahamas, gap years spent climbing Machu Picchu or building a school for the poor in Kenya, about herring down the M4 for weekends in London, house parties in the countryside, long weekenders in Paris, Copenhagen, Prague, Dublin or Vilnius. Where was that even? Most students weren't like that, but the really posh ones were the loudest and the most confident, and they were the only voices she heard. They made her feel crushed, worthless, and a nobody, without saying a word to her, without even noticing her. Nobody talked loudly about growing up in a council flat on a skyscraper estate with a single mother who worked as a cleaner. Nobody talked loudly about never having gone on a single holiday like ever. Nobody talked loudly about never having been on a plane, seen a play, or the sea, or eaten in a restaurant with waiters. Nobody talked loudly about feeling too ugly, stupid, fat, poor, or just plain out of place, out of sorts, out of their depth. Nobody talked loudly about being gangbound at 13 and a half. When she heard another student refer to her in passing as so ghetto, she wanted to spin on her heels and shout after her, excuse me, excuse me, say that to my face, yach. People were killed for less where she came from. Or had she misheard it? Were they actually saying, get to the library, supermarket? She couldn't even make eye contact when she walked along the narrow corridors built for the smaller men of long ago, centuries before women were permitted entry, as she'd been told at the first induction, where everyone seemed to be making instant friends, and she spoke to no one. People walked around her, or looked through her, or was she imagining it? Did she exist, or was she an illusion? If I strip off and streak across the quadrangle, will anyone notice me other than the porters, who will no doubt call the feds, an excuse they've been waiting for ever since they first set eyes upon her? When a student sidled up after a lecture to ask for some ecstasy, Carol almost texted her mother to say she's on the next train home. At the end of her first term, she returned to Peckham, informing her mother she didn't want to go to university, back to university because although she liked her studies and was managing to stay on top of most of it, she didn't belong there and just wasn't going back. I'm done, Mama. I'm done. Eh, eh. Which came nonsense be this? Bobby shouted. Am I hearing you correctly? Or you may I clean my ear with matches? Listen to me good, Carol Williams. Firstly, do you think Oprah Winfrey, VIP, would have become the queen of television worldwide if she had not risen above the setbacks of her early life? Secondly, do you think Diane Abbott, VIP, would have become Britain's first black woman MP if she did not believe it was her right to enter politics and represent her community? Thirdly, do you think Valerie Amos, VIP, would have become the first black woman baroness in this country if she had burst into tears when she walked into the House of Lords and seen it was full of elderly white gentlemen? <laughs> Lastly, did me and Papa come to this country for a better life only to see our daughter giving up on her opportunities and end up distributing paper hand towels for tips in nightclub toilets or concert venues, as is the fate of too many of our country women. You must go back to this university in January and stop thinking everybody hates you without giving them a chance. Did you even ask them? Did you go up to them and say, excuse me, do you hate me? You must find the people who will want to be your friends, even if they are all white people. There is someone for everyone in this world. You must go back and fight the battles that are your British birthright, Carol, as a true Nigerian. Carol returned to her college, resolved to conquer the place where she would spend the next two and a half years of her life. She would fit in, she decided. She would find her people, as her mother had advised. That's it. <laughs>